Hi, George here. And today we're going to be changing the color of this jacket in here. We'll also be adjusting the values in the picture a little bit and fixing these really strange looking eyes as well and ending up with something like that. Now we'll be covering a lot of different processes in here inside of Photoshop Elements. I'm working in Photoshop Elements 2025 right now, but this works in most versions of Photoshop Elements. I'm not doing anything really dramatic in here. And this will be using just a few things that you can do in Photoshop Elements. If you want to learn everything about how to use Photoshop Elements, all the tools, all the menus, panels, everything, the best way to do that is with my complete training course. I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. Okay, we'll start off here by just getting rid of all of these layers. Hit the delete key, there we go. And we're back down to the original image. Now, if you want to download this same picture, I have a link for this in the description. If you want to get the finished file with all the layers and everything, and also with a step-by-step -step list, I'll be putting that into my photo coach program for Photoshop Elements. That's a great reference tool. Now, the first thing we'll be doing in here is to make a duplicate of the background. We won't actually be touching this background, so it's safe if you don't, but I always like to do this anyway, just as a habit. That way, when you do need it, you're going to be okay. So where it says background, right click, duplicate layer, choose okay. There we go. I'll actually use this as a comparison layer at the end of the video. It's not a bad idea to have this in here. So here's our duplicate copy. Now we need to separate out the jacket from everything else so that we can work just on the jacket. And we'll be using adjustment layers for this. Now I've tried the different tools. There are lots of different selection tools you can use in here. But because of the values that are almost the same in the background and several spots in here, like right down over here, none of these tools really work very well. So I'll be doing it the old fashioned way using the polygonal lasso tool. Come down here and let's change this so it says new. That's that first setting. I have my feathering set at one pixel. That just kind of softens the edge of your selection just a little bit, makes it a bit cleaner. And I'll use the wheel on my mouse to scroll in so you can get a better view of this. If you have a wheel on your mouse, this isn't set up automatically in Photoshop Elements. It's an option. You can find that up here under Edit Menu. Come down to Preferences and General. And it's that checkbox right there. Zoom with scroll wheel in the General section. Okay, I'm going to start right over here where the hair is in front of the jacket. And I'll come around and do this right up against the edge of the hair. Now, when you use this tool, don't click too fast. If you click too fast, it's going to collapse your selection. You have to start over again. So just take your time in here and come around and do a nice clean selection. And just follow this around. You can come in as close as you want to to see what you're doing. And the closer you are in, the easier it is actually to follow along on your edges. And just go right up around here. And right up in here. Notice I'm doing just little dots and then Photoshop Elements fills in that line in between the dots that I'm placing down. If you're on a curve, just put your dots closer together. If you're on more of a straight area, you can then put your dots further apart. I like getting into just kind of a Zen mode on this. Just relax a little bit. Give it a beat between each click and you should be just fine. Now the nice thing about doing a layer mask, which we'll be doing here, is you can always come back and clean it up after it's made. So there is some flexibility in here, so you're not going to be messing things up. Okay, let's just work around this area in here again, trying to spot where those parts are. There we go. Something I will sometimes do is use an adjustment layer and then make the layer a lot brighter using the levels adjustment. Then I can see the edges better, but in this case, we don't really need to. If you get down here to an edge like this, just hold the space bar down. You can then push your image up like that, let go of the space bar, and then continue. Where the image goes off the edge, this one's really easy. Just come outside like that and click and go over here, click outside again, and then back inside. So you can extend your selection just outside of your border like that. Makes that part of it real fast and easy to do. Okay, up around this side over here. Almost can't see it right there, so I'm kind of just guessing where it is. There's some reflections going on top of that, a little bit of blurring going on top of that. But there we go, that should do that jacket. I'll use the Control Zero keyboard shortcut to put that back to fit screen. Let's now do an adjustment layer, which is up here, layer and new adjustment layer. We're we'll doing hue and saturation, where it says use previous layer. Check that. She's okay. That just limits it to that one layer. Now, when you have a selection and then you open an adjustment layer, it takes that selection and turns it into a layer mask on the adjustment layer. It's real easy this way. Now in here, 
Come down, click where it says Colorize. Notice how the color changed in there. So we're already doing a color change. You can now take the Hue slider and get any color that you want. And I'm thinking kind of a nice purple is good in here. Bring our saturation up a little bit like that. Not too much, just a bit. If you go too far, it gets kind of garish looking. I mean, you might like that, that's okay. You have that option, but I'll go for something right around here. Now, don't use the lightness control on this. If you use the lightness control, see what happens? You lose your contrast. So you get the really weird looking edges on that. So let's just leave that one at zero. We'll be adjusting the values, but we'll do it with a levels adjustment instead, much better. Okay, so there's our basic coloration. You can sure hide that right down here. I think that's a lot nicer. So it feels like it's a good jacket. Close that down. Let's now adjust our values on this layer. Go up here to layer, come down to adjustment layer again, and levels, there we go. Same thing, check that checkbox, choose okay. Here's our levels control. Now at this point, this is being applied to your whole image, you can see right there, it's a blank layer mask. So come down to this layer mask, click on this, hold the Alt key down, pull that layer mask straight up, say yes, and that copies this layer mask up to this layer up here. Let's go back over to this layer. So now we can work on this and it's just going to be affecting just the jacket. Okay, make it just a little bit richer in here, bring our darks down just a bit. Don't go too far, it kind of blocks up. So just a little bit in there to darken the dark parts down. It's like right over here. Let me change my pointer here to a pointer. There we are, so right here, right down over here. Here's the mid-tone values, like that. I think I'll leave those alone. And I'll bring the whites up just a little bit. What I'm doing here is I'm just increasing the contrast a bit in the jacket, making it just a bit more punchy, which I think looks better. A little bit more contrast right there. Okay, that's nice. Let's say you want to increase the values in here in the face a little bit, maybe lighten things up a bit here and the background possibly. We can do that as well. The best way here is to make another adjustment layer, come up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer right here and levels. This time don't check that. And that applies this to the whole image. Now we don't actually want that because I don't want to do this kind of a thing in here. But what we can do now is to fill this layer with black. So I have black as my foreground color. Let's grab the paint bucket. Make sure you're on the layer mask side. That's that light blue outline. Click in here and that should fill up with black. There we go. Let's now change the color over here to white. Grab the paintbrush. Bring my brush size up a lot. Pretty good size brush like that. I have a soft edge brush. And now paint in where you want to have your adjustment going. So I want the adjustment right over the face in here. We can clean this up once we have this done. So don't worry if your edges are off by a little bit, doesn't matter if we can clean that up. So I want that. And let's get the background over here. I'm just gonna follow around the jacket like this. If you see the layer mask over there, you can actually see where I'm painting on that layer mask side. I'll just fill this in and just go back and forth in here. Again, we'll clean this up after we have our adjustment on and I'll show you how to do that real easy. Okay, a bit up in here somewhere. And I think that's just about right. Okay, same thing on this side over here. Let's come around the edge of the hair like that. Again, I'm not being real careful with this yet. And then around the outside edge, there we go. And then back and forth and just fill this in. And once again, you can watch it over there on the right-hand side. Each time I let go of the mouse, it's going to update that layer mask right-hand side. We'll then see that very easily. We'll then come back and clean things up. Okay, just right down here. And I think we're just about there. Okay, that looks good. Let's now click on the left side here. Double click brings up your controls. And I'm gonna move this way up like that so it's really high. So I can see where that layer mask is working in there. Okay, let's go back over now to the layer mask side and let's get this bit right in here. I saw that I missed that. Now I don't want it on the hair down here. So let's change the color here to black. And then I'll make my brush size a bit smaller, the left square bracket key. And let's come in here and just add a bit of black on that layer mask on the hair right there. And same thing on this side over here, the hair. Just cleaning up that layer mask. Again, you can see how 
this is working over there. If you take a look at the layer mask thumbnail, bring my brush size way down here. And let's just get right in this edge here. That will then leave the hair outside of the adjustment, which we want. And right down there. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Now, you can come back in and set this back down to 1. And then I can tweak the values in here just a little bit. So I'm, I'm lightening the background up and the face just a little bit. It's actually pretty good as is. So I'm doing this mostly just to show you in case your image is not that great. This is a pretty well lit image. But this does allow you to come in and do your adjustments. Now, if I wanted to, I could do the face on one layer and the same trick for the background on a different layer and get even more complex. But this is enough, I think, for this video. Let's do the show and hide down here. And I'm just watching the hair, and the hair is okay. A bit better contrast on the face. I like that a lot better. Let's now take a look at these weird eyes in here. If I zoom in on this, they're really kind of strange. You can see what has happened here. The photographer is using one of those circular lights that's around the camera. When you take this picture, it gives you a real flat lighting, but it also gives you the reflection of that circular light. And we don't want to have that. So let's fix that. I'll make a new layer over here, right-hand side. New layer button. There we go. Let's change our color to black. Let's grab our paintbrush. We want a soft edge brush, but a lot smaller than this. I'll use the left square bracket key and bring my brush size down to just a little bit smaller. And let's just paint black right on top of that. There we go. And the eyes are going to look kind of dead when we do this because there's no reflection on here. We can fix that as well. Okay, that's good. I'm going to tap my brush size up just one tap. Let's change the color over here to white. I think my edge is too soft on that one. That's kind of hard to adjust your softness right here. So let's go over here where it says brush settings. And here's your hardness right there. I'm going to bring my hardness up about halfway. So it's right about 50% like that. So it's halfway between soft and hard. And I think that's going to work out better for us. Let's change our size here to 12. I think 12 pixels will be just about right. Okay, upper left corner just above that pupil and then come into pupil just a, just a little bit. Do a tap right there. And same thing over here. One, two. And that's much better. There we go. That fixes the eyes. If I want to see how this whole thing looks, kind of do a comparison before and after. It's easy to do. Up here to the top layer, hold down a special keyboard shortcut. It's Control, Shift, Alt. And then tap the E key. And that gives you one layer with all this stuff combined onto one layer. I can now hide all this stuff. Let's show the background again, and then I'll hide that. There's the original, and here's our new version. Nice color change on that jacket. We fixed those eyes, and we've adjusted the values in the face just a little bit. I might have been just a little bit too bright still on the highlights, or maybe a little bit smaller would have been better, but I think I'll leave that as is. Let's do Control zero to fit screen again. And again, if you want to get a lot more training for Photoshop Elements, Check the link in the description for my complete video training course. If you want to get step-by-step -step instructions for this video and many of my other videos here on YouTube, I put those into my HTG Photo Coach, which also is a great reference tool. And it gives you step-by-step -step instructions for everything inside of Photoshop Elements. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up and give me a like on the video. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. I'm doing new videos all the time. You don't want to miss any of those. And to guarantee that, click on that bell icon to get notifications when my new videos go up. And I'll see you next time.